But now, stylish, cheap clothing is just a click or a shop away. Yes, it's great for cash strap fashion lovers and levels the field, but is the planet being leveled with it? With more than 100 billion garments being made each year, the world is drowning in clothes. Tonight, Marvel Moore Ayer asks, can we slow down fast fashion? There's only one word for Sire Clayton Wade. Fabulous. When something looks good and it feels good and it moves good with your body, that's just a feeling that I can't even describe. It's like love at first sight. <laughs> <laughs> love is priceless. At least that love is close. In which case, it'll cost you. When the paycheck comes in, I'm already thinking about all the things that I'm going to buy. Once a week, I've always got something brand new. <laughs> Let's go have a look at your wardrobe. Yes, Sire. Yes. Ooh, so organised. Tell me about your favourite item of clothing at the moment. Oh, I'm going to have to go with probably this ruby top. Ooh. Going into a store and just seeing all the vibrant colours and the textures, like, that's dreamland for me. Love shopping, love a bit of retail therapy. It's an incredible feeling, it's a rush. Like, even, even just, just getting, getting it now, talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, there's a bit of sire in all of us. Ooh, I like that. Nice and simple. I could wear it to work. We're a nation besotted with buying clothes. It feels great, and then I'm broke. When I buy things, I feel brighter, younger. It's addiction. Good. Really, really good. <laughs> For most people, it's a sense of feeling alive. You know, it gives you a vitality. It's, it can renew your sense of self, your identity, and all of those things are, are the great things about fashion. Associate Professor Jennifer Whitty is a fashion industry expert. Traditionally, there was two main seasons, autumn, winter, spring, summer. And they were the kind of benchmarks that you would like anticipate and look forward to. There was something, you know, that tapped into your kind of sense of delayed satisfaction. But by the turn of the millennium, the fashion world was being reshaped by a new, faster way of doing business. Fast fashion enables clothing to be overproduced in a way that it enables us to buy on impulse. It has sped up to a rate of always on, always new, it's more, more, more. And it's, it's really hard for us to process that. We are just rabbits in the headlights. The rise of social media, the ubiquity of apps like TikTok, that has shifted everything. They're able to analyze our search engines and know what we want, what we're looking at, and produce it really, really rapidly. Brands like Zara, H&M, and Jean replicate designer looks at a cut price. It's very profitable. <laughs> Incredibly profitable. We've Some of the richest people on the planet are in the fast fashion industry. People getting rich off the backs of others. One in six people on the planet is working in the fashion industry in some capacity. 80% of them are women, and up to 80% of those women are working in modern day slavery conditions. Tell me about what you're wearing today. So this is a whole sheen fit. I bought the pants first, and then I really wanted a matching top. So I think I just scrolled and had a look and eventually found a top that was perfect to match. A third year student at Victoria University, Saya can't afford expensive clothes. How much did it cost you? Altogether, probably less than $40. You can't beat that. No, you actually can't, because it's about, you know, the economic side of it. It's about what's accessible to myself and to our whānau and what they can afford. You know, I don't want to be shopping at fast fashion retailers, but it's one of the only options that's there for me. Jean, an online clothing giant. During the COVID pandemic, it saw a meteoric rise in sales, rapidly overtaking brands like H&M and Zara. Designers can make a whole entire collection of clothing and not even, you know, an hour after it's been put on the runway, Sheen already have those sketches ready. They're already getting ready to put it <laughs> online, selling it. Tell me about shopping on Sheen. It's overwhelming. It's like 
walking into a shop with a lot of bright lights and advertising. There's so many garments, accessories, just way too much stuff here on one person and there's a billion clothes. Okay, so in total, we got 16 items. This is the Shein Haul Trend. And got some Shein stuff again. Let's try it on. My has arrived. People buy clothes in bulk, then showcase the outfits on social media. It's fast fashion on steroids, and the quantities are staggering. Last year, Zara produced 450 million items of clothing. That's nothing compared to H&M's 3 billion garments. But wait for it, some experts estimate... Sheen made 49 billion. 49 billion, billion garments, garments in last year in 2022. It's just, it's beyond comprehension. You know, it's just mind boggling. We've been taught that fashion's not important. It's a bit of fluff. It's this kind of frivolous industry. It's, it's like a wolf in sheep's clothing. It is, it is disguising how impactful it can be. 10% of global carbon emissions are attributed to the fashion industry. What? 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 The problem is just the volume that's coming out at the beginning. The carbon footprint of clothing, like the production of it, all of the wastage of it. 24-year-old engineering student Megan Thomas is trying to be a conscious shopper. So like maybe a third to half my wardrobe is a shop. She's stylish and she's pulling it off with clothes that may have once been yours. What about what you're wearing now? All off shops. Um, oh, wow. So I think shoes were design and wardrobe. This one, I think it was like 15 bucks from like Paper Princess. And then this one was off shop in Rome, which is very snobby, but it was, yeah. <laughs> the thrill is in the chase. When you finally get something, it's kind of a bigger reward because you put the work in. You've won, you've found the discount, you found the bargain. What makes an off shop piece good? It's like you pick it up and you like feel it and it'll be like in the quality and like in the tailoring and like it's how it fits and how it feels and like what it's made of. It's made of something really good, like it's silk or it's leather or it's really like heavy denim. In recent years, fast fashion clothing donations to charity shops have skyrocketed. Here's a perfect example of it. Hundreds of singlets from a fast fashion brand. Brand new, still with their tags on. They weren't wanted, so they've been donated here in store. And a year later, they're still on sale for a dollar each. Where does off shop sit in your idea of a solution? It's definitely helping. It's definitely kind of maybe taking those things that would have maybe gone to landfill. Um, you know, giving a longer sort of lifespan to a product. But I think more of that fast fashion is making its way into off shops. It's harder and harder to find those good pieces. Let's have a little look at this rack and see what brands we've got. So we've got Zara, a bit of Witchery, some H&M, Maroon. These are all fast fashion brands. Yeah. yeah it wow. Just... What about this? Yeah. So bit of Zara. Um, she's not real leather, which is a shame, so she would have been nice. So yeah, like you're already going to get... Yeah. So you can oh get yeah. Stuff. It's already falling apart. Oh, just plastic, isn't it? It is just plastic. So Jennifer, I just bought this top recently. How does this play into the system? Let's have a little look what they're going to tell us. Polyamide, I believe, is a version of a kind of of a synthetic polyester kind of petrochemical derived. A huge proportion of our textiles are made with oil derivatives. Polyester comes from oil. The complexity of this blend can make it quite tricky to actually do something else. But as we know, something like 85% of our garments will, will end up in landfill. But before you buy it, do you need another basic white top? Do you, how many do you have already? Mm, three. <laughs> Fast fashion has revolutionized the way we make, buy, and wear clothes. But, there's a disturbing side. I had no idea about, you know, really where or how clothes were made. I was a typical teenage teenager, you know, went shopping with my friends, bought new clothes for each event, H&M, Zara, Forever 21, all the, all the goodies. Samantha Jones, 
founder of Wellington-based apparel company Little Yellow Bird. The more I learned about where and how clothes are made, the more I knew that this was an industry and an area that I wanted to make change in, and the whole model is really broken and unsustainable. What don't fast fashion companies want us to know? I think that they don't want you to ask where the clothes come from because they know that the conditions aren't, you know, acceptable. Like, no one wants to buy a T-shirt if they think a 12-year-old has made it or that the river has been polluted to get that bright shade of green. All they know is, I can get it quickly and it looks good. That is the tip of the iceberg. They don't know where it's made. They don't know how it's made. They don't know about its connections with modern day slavery. They don't know the impacts on the waterways, on the air system, on the earth. Samantha's company creates sustainably made uniforms worn by staff at places like NZ Post in New Zealand. What makes your company different? That we have full traceability and transparency around where and how the raw fibres are made. She's trying to clean up the messy world of fast fashion across every part of her business. We can take back garments and recycle them. You can buy a textile take that bag off our website and you can fill it with cotton from any brand and we'll take that back. The team sorts the clothes and sends it all to a factory in Sweden. Fibres get shredded, get broken down to the molecular level, uh, turned into a pulp, and then it actually gets fed back into uh, textile supply chain and new fibres created from those old fibres. I've been blown away by how many people want it, how many people contact us about it. But the reality is, it's still a tiny proportion of consumers. And this fabric to fabric recycling can only be done with pure cotton. A lot of clothing in the world is blended with plastics. So it's a bit of an oxymoron, it's a bit of a contradiction because those clothes, while they might be produced in a rapid manner, they're actually going to be on this planet for up to 200 years. And that plastic blended fabric, there's a lot of it. In a fast fashion, you're seeing the absolute increase uh, on the amount of materials coming to the landfill. It's near double what it was eight years ago. It would be around 70 trucks a week would be coming in with uh, yeah, clothing textile. And that's just at one landfill. Ingrid Cronin Knight is in charge of it all here at Breedvale. So, Ingrid, how does it all work here? Well, the first thing we do is we line the, the land to protect it from the waste. And then trucks come in over the wave bridge and they deposit the waste um, in different parts of the site. And then we compact it down, uh, cover it in soil, and then it starts producing gas, which we capture and turn into electricity. Oh, wow. So you get something good out of the waste. That's right. Uh, helping, I think we've got the ability uh, across the country to power the equivalent of 25,000 homes. Remember that white top I bought? How would something like this behave in the landfill? Well, let me just have a look at what it's made of. Yeah. So, and as, as suspected, it's you know, uh, a high composition of polyester. It's the perfect example of the problem. We can't create electricity out of it. So this would just stay in the landfill as it is and not break down. Anyway, can't we just recycle all of this old clothing? Well, it'd be great if we could. It's really complex and hard to turn back into another piece of clothing. But in the end, just delaying disposal. So we're essentially delaying waste. Yeah, that's right. But it's still going to end up in the landfill. I think people are ashamed of their waste, and I think that ultimately they're disconnected from what happens to it. Well, it's one of those things you can't unknow like once you see it. Uh, and so I've absolutely changed. I buy a lot less uh, than what I did, and uh, when I do, I try and choose natural products. So even you, whose whole career is waste, wants to see less of it here in the landfill? Well, absolutely. We can pick up everyone's waste, and most people think it's our waste. No, it's your waste. When you pick all that up, uh, you, get, you get to really care about what is actually happening. So who's responsible for this growing mess? I do think that those mega companies have the lion's share of responsibility, 100%. Yes, they have set up a system that they've been so insidiously clever at pulling on our strings. I think it's just back to that old adage, buy less and choose as wisely as you can. When you go to buy a garment, if you look at it and you think that I'm not going to wear this 30 times, maybe think twice before buying it. True love for Sia Clayton Wade. This is Wardrobe. 
fashion and my style is my armour, it's my guard. So, you know, I can go out into the world and I just have that protection with me. It's, it's such a beautiful feeling. We need to look fabulous at all costs. <laughs> And that's the dilemma. Like Saya, we all want to look and feel great without breaking the bank. But the true cost of fast fashion may be more than any of us can afford. What are these brands going to do for the future, for the intergenerational well-being of our planet? Because it takes away the beauty from the fashion industry. While the business shows no signs of slowing, online fashion giant Shein is planning to list on world's top markets this year. This fast fashion giant expects its sales will double by 2025.